first time I analyzed Inside, I came to the conclusion that the boy and the hive mind were a part of an elaborate experiment by the facility. The purpose of this experiment was to draw in the strongest of the remaining human population to create a greater hive mind, which would extend the facility's control in perpetuity until they achieved global domination. Most of you seem to respond pretty positively to my interpretation, so positively that I have accumulated more likes and views on this video than on all my other videos combined. While this response is humbling, and trust me, I am very grateful, I still possessed some doubts. When I combine the respectful disagreement I received, plus the fact that Inside offers a wordless narrative that lacks any concrete explanations for anything, I urged myself to not put all my faith in just my interpretation. However, this feeling lasted only a week and then something happened that made me believe my theory was closest to the truth. Commenters urged me to review one segment of the game again, which was the collection of the orbs. I knew from reading online forums that in order to unlock an alternate ending you would have to collect all of the orbs. Yet, I didn't collect all the orbs for myself until after I uploaded my first analysis. I knew that once all the orbs were collected, you would have to enter the bunker in the cornfield, enter the musical passcode, and then unplug the power cable to get the alternate ending. What I did not know is that if you went to the left, inside the bunker, you would happen upon one of the 14 orbs you need to collect. Upon first glance, there doesn't seem to be anything special about this room. Probably just a secret area that gives a tiny bit of dimension to what the facility does. But take a look at the only fully developed photo hanging from the clothesline. It might not be discernible to those watching this video on YouTube, but to those who play the game for themselves, it's undeniable what this is a picture of. The hive mind. Rather, it is a picture of the hive mind outside the confines of its watery prison. What this tells me is that the hive mind we know whether it's a previous one or the one we happen upon in the game, has escaped its prison before. This bolsters my original theory that the hive mind is a part of a cyclical experiment where it grows in power, escapes, and is then paralyzed under an intentionally placed beam of light, much like the underwater creatures when the submarine's light is shown at them. The hive mind then becomes controlled in a new way to accommodate its increase in size and power. Now, some of you may pass off this Polaroid as an easter egg, akin to the posters of Metal Gear games within Metal Gear games. I would have accepted this explanation if it weren't for the achievement you receive once you enter the room and interact with the orb. The name of the achievement is Field Research. The description for this achievement says, Unearthing Secrets. While the name and descriptor serve the purpose of chilling the player to the bone, it also causes you to think. Who is doing this field research? Why is there an orb in this room? Does this researcher have something to do with the other orbs found throughout the game? I looked to the comments on my original video to see if anybody may have started a discussion over this plot thread I initially neglected. My favorite theory comes from a gentleman named Fahad al -Riyami. His theory not only makes sense, but works well with what I have already set up in regards to the bunker and the Polaroid. Allow me to read you his theory verbatim. I think we're forgetting something. Someone built that underground bunker, installed that PC there, and intentionally put a trapdoor in the middle of the cornfield to hide it all. Was it the farmer who only built the farm as a guise? Could the farmer have been an ex-Evil Corps employee who didn't agree with what the company was doing? This would explain the song required to enter the bunker, a song only a longtime employee would remember so well. If you look at the mind control computer in the bunker, you'll see a seat. It seems the ex-employee was once the one controlling the boy, or children before him, guiding them through the facility to try and disrupt the experiment and put an end to it. The farmer was probably captured at some point and thrown into the hive mind, where he guided the boy back to the bunker to unplug the mind control computer, in the hopes of stopping any further attempts at playing this game and ending the experiment. Despite a couple of personal quandaries about the wording of this theory, I find it to be equally the most logical as it is delightful. It reminds me of the story of Portal with the rebellious yet elusive Doug Ratman, alerting you to the false reality GLaDOS and Aperture Science have set up for you, except instead of the cake being a lie, your freedom is a lie. 
Instead of helping you to escape Aperture Science, you're trying to engage the fail-safe program built in by the ex-employee to end the cycle of control. Granted, some of you might say that the facility implemented this fail-safe as a safety measure, much like how Lord Eamon's tribe transferred Dormant's soul into 16 giants in Shadow of the Colossus. In response, I would have to ask why the facility would place so many of the orbs in such dangerous areas, areas that most employees would not care to venture to. If everything needed to be shut down at a moment's notice, the facility is sure making it difficult for themselves. And besides, why would they want to ever end the cycle of control? Seeing as the world seems to be dependent on this drone labor, shutting everything down seems about as unfathomable as Konami rebooting Silent Hills with Hideo Kojima at the helm. So, in conclusion, I believe these orbs reroute power from the facility's main network of control, so that if there was a chance that the ex-employee or an outside force could never help the hive mind escape or take down the facility, then everything could secretly be shut down. Little did the facility know that by throwing the rebellious yet genius employee into the hive mind, it would find an outside force to do just that. Finally, there are a couple of odds and ends my viewers wanted me to address. I'll start with the simplest of the bunch, the worms and the pigs. Science has determined that humans and pigs share genetic similarities, which makes them useful for medical research. Obviously, the facility developed these worms as parasites to latch onto their hosts and control them. However, much like the hive mind and the long-haired swimmers, there was an element of free will that would override this control and cause the host to go rampant. Even though there was a surplus of pigs for the facility to experiment on, human beings are a far more complex species and would require more than one parasite to control, and unlike pigs, controlling humans could serve a much more useful purpose. So the facility left the farm they initially bought out once their experiments took them as far as they could go. And then there is the shockwave stage. Unlike most of the other levels in the game, there is not much to infer about this level's purpose from any hidden clues. Unlike the other elements of this game, there doesn't seem to be anybody offering theories online about why this level exists. So keep in mind as I offer my interpretation that I am only guessing. When you look out into the mist and you see that brief flash of light, what does that remind you of? Probably a cloud and a lightning storm, right? You don't see the actual lightning bolts, but you see the flash. I believe that whatever caused this dystopian future, be it a nuclear catastrophe or something else, caused a highly industrialized electrical plant to collapse. What resulted was a powerful shockwave resulting from highly concentrated bolts of electricity. Some of you might not know, but when lightning goes off in the atmosphere, there are small shockwaves that emit from it. Regardless, I believe the most important thing about this level is not what is causing the shockwave, I believe it is those poles out in the distance. If you look closely, you'll see electrical cables stemming out from both sides of the poles. I believe these poles are meant to capture the radiant energy caused by the shockwave to help power the facility, almost like Tesla's radiant energy device, which extends to a considerable height and picks up energy in the atmosphere. It would then send the energy down into a capacitor and then charge it. The discharge within these machines would power whatever the cables are attached to. As for the crash test dummies we see later, I believe that the room they occupy was a testing room for potential electricians to see if they could handle going out into the field to set up these electrical poles. The dummies were there to determine whether or not their position relative to the source of the shockwave would be lethal. Apparently it was, considering things seem abandoned with the dummies stuck in place and some of them falling out of their chairs. I believe I have covered most of the big questions surrounding this game. Anything else I could cover, like the possible connections between this game and Play Dead Studios' previous game Limbo, would just be pointing out similarities between the two. These things include the mind control slugs, the use of reverse gravity, and the use of a device to create lightning and rain. Maybe there's a connection between that and the shockwave level. Maybe the boy in Limbo is manifesting some parts of the facility as part of his nightmare. Any theorizing about how they are connected would be, much like the shockwave level, a wild guess. But hey, that's one of the reasons why theorizing is so much fun.